we live in a pluralistic culture. Sometimes people say that as if it's a problem. And I've got to say, there are a lot of problems about pluralism. Uh, but we have to learn how to deal with the problems. But we also need to learn to how to celebrate what's good about pluralism. Uh, I'm sure many of you know that uh, my favorite theologian, probably the one thinker who has influenced me the most in my overall patterns of thinking about theology and uh, faith in public life is the great uh, Abraham Kuyper, the uh, 19th century theologian in the Netherlands who also did a lot of other things, including serving for a while as prime minister of the Netherlands, and he understood pluralism very well. Uh, Abraham Kuyper, uh, at the heart of his theology, is something that uh, I resonate with deeply, although I find that a lot of people uh, haven't really thought much about it, and that is that that God likes diversity. Uh, as I'm giving this uh, talk, I'm getting ready to talk to a, a group of uh, theologians um, at another part of the country about, uh, about creation care. And uh, one of the wonderful things about a theology of creation is that uh, so much happened before we human beings came along. You know, we get hung up on these, I think, really diverting, diversionary arguments about six-day creation and all the rest. But the wonderful thing about that creation account is how much happened before we came along. And uh, God looked at the void and said, let there be, and there was. And he said, that's good. You know? And he looked at plants. He called them into being. He looked at the plants, and he said, that's good. You know, at, at a certain point, he says, and, 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 he, and God, God called life into being, and he looked at the swarms. And he said, that's good. And God looked at puddles full of slimy, swarmy things. And he took delight in that. And that uh, before we ever came along, there were lots of trees and plants and animals and canyons and mountains and rivers and all the rest. And that God took delight in that. God takes delight in the diversity of the creation. The Lord rejoices in his manifold works, the psalmist tells us. And there's a manifoldness in in the human community that God also takes delight in. And all of our worries about the, the bad aspects of pluralism ought never to divert us from uh, uh, taking delight in it. That uh, early on in the, in, in the scriptures, uh, God, there was a curse of Babel, and uh, God chose one nation, one people, as over against all the other peoples. And, and he said to the people of Israel, it's through you that I'm going to show the world what it means to live in the light of my will for all of life, including how to farm, how to deal with finance, and how to build temples, and how to raise families, and how to be married in faithful ways, and, and all the rest. Uh, but God never intended that as the final part of the story. And so in the book of Isaiah, it says at one point that there's going to come a day when the Lord God on the mountain of the house of the Lord will will prepare a feast for all people. In fact, I love the old King James on this. He's going to prepare a feast of fat things for all people. It's going to be a risk-free cholesterol binge uh, for all people, food from tribes and tongues and nations of the earth. And, and on the day of Pentecost, uh, that promise begins to be fulfilled. So there's this wonderful uh, hymn in Revelation 5, for, for you were slain and by your blood you ransom men and women for God from every tribe and tongue and people and nation. And you've made us a kingdom and priests unto our God. But we're going to be drawn together out of our diverse languages and races and ethnicities and national identities into a new kind of kingdom. And we're going to sing a, a, in a multitude that no human being can number. We're going to sing songs of praises to the Lamb. So pluralism, a plurality of peoples uh, singing praises to God, that's a good thing. And we have so much work to do to overcome the ethnocentrism, the super patriotism, the racism, the discrimination of, uh, against women and many other things uh, that have for so long uh, kept us from understanding uh, God's love of plurality. But there are bad things about pluralism, and we've got to get to that as well. But we shouldn't get to that until we understand that God 
likes a pluralistic society where there are different spheres of action. God likes art. God likes politics. God likes economics. God likes entertainment. God likes football games and basketball games. Uh, I think uh, when, uh, when, when, a, when a tight end uh, catches a 40-yard pass thrown well by a quarterback and, and scores, that God looks at that and says, that's good. That's one of the reasons why I created this world. Uh, at the beginning of this uh, uh, centennial, uh, I was interviewed by Sports Illustrated. They did a cover story. Does God care who wins the Super Bowl? And I was, uh, I was up against uh, a well-known Pentecostal preacher who was also a, a really fine football player, now with the Lord. Uh, and he said, uh, yeah, sure, God cares because God loves winners and God hates losers. And I was pitted over against him. I'm glad that I never I had to tangle with him in person. But I said, you know, when, 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 a, when a good block is, uh, is, is thrown and when a good pass is received, uh, God says that's one of the reasons why I created this world, that God loves that kind of diversity, and we ought to love that diversity too. And to be civil is also to appreciate that kind of diversity, even though at the same time, our convictions will put us up against pluralities of lifestyles and belief systems and superstitions and all the rest that as Christians uh, we, we, cannot, uh, we cannot feel good about or take delight in because we know that God does not take delight in certain kinds of pluralisms.